Hello citizens of internet. I am Professor Ajit Vedkur from Mumbai, India. Today I am going to discuss recommendations for prenatal administration of corticosteroids. Prenatal or antenatal corticosteroid therapy before anticipated preterm birth is one of the most important antenatal therapies and an important evidence-based practice for reducing fetal mortality and decreasing rates of complications in premature infants. Before I delve into the topic proper, as is my trademark, I will first discuss few basics and historical aspects related to the topic. The pulmonary system is among the last of the fetal organ systems to mature, both functionally and structurally. This poses a grave problem in pregnancies where preterm birth is anticipated. Because the immature pulmonary system may not oxygenate the preterm neurate adequately, preterm birth can lead to significant neonatal morbidity and mortality. Fortunately, there is a solution. Antenatal administration of corticosteroids can significantly improve fetal lung maturity as demonstrated by Liggins and Liggins. Administration of corticosteroids has other fetal benefits too, which I will elaborate subsequently. Antenatal corticosteroids are associated with a significant reduction in rates of neonatal death, respiratory distress syndrome, and intravascular hemorrhage. Also, they are relatively safe for the mother. The idea of administering corticosteroids in the antenatal period to improve fetal lung maturity is based on the seminal work by Liggins and Hovey in 1972. The NIH Consensus Development Conference confirmed their findings and advocated their use in 1994. Prenatal use of corticosteroids is now recommended by most obstetric societies worldwide. How does antenatal administration of corticosteroids improve fetal lung maturity? Prenatal corticosteroid administration accelerates the development of type 1 pneumocytes in the alveoli of the lungs which facilitates gas exchange and type 2 pneumocytes that produce surfactant. This causes structural and biochemical changes that improve lung function. They help to induce the pulmonary beta receptors which play a role in surfactant release and absorption of alveolar fluid. Corticosteroids induce the fetal lung antioxidant enzymes. They also help to upregulate the gene expression of the epithelial sodium channel, which is important for absorption of lung fluid after birth. What are the benefits of giving steroids? A course of antenatal corticosteroids given 7 days prior to anticipated preterm birth reduces perinatal and neonatal death respiratory distress syndrome and intraventricular hemorrhage. There are other benefits too. Their use is also associated with a reduction in necrotizing enterocolitis and need for respiratory support after delivery. They diminish the incidence of intensive care admissions and systemic infections in the first 48 hours of life compared with no treatment or treatment with placebo. They also reduce chances of ductus arteriosus remaining patent after birth. How effective are they? A Cochrane review of 21 studies showed that treatment of women at risk of preterm birth with a single course of antenatal corticosteroids reduces the risk of neonatal death by 31%, respiratory distress syndrome by 44% and intraventricular hemorrhage by 46% as shown in this graph. Are there any risks associated with giving corticosteroids prenatally? Multivariate analysis in humans have shown that antenatal corticosteroid administration is associated with 1. Reduce birth weight and behavioral disorders at 3 years of age. Secondly, it may increase psychiatric and behavioral diagnosis in children born at term. And thirdly, it may cause neonatal hypoglycemia. Are there any contraindications to the use of antenatal corticosteroids? As you know, corticosteroids 
suppress the immune system so there is a chance that their use may activate latent infections or exacerbate fungal infections there is no evidence to suggest that a single course of corticosteroids would have a profound effect in women with systemic infection but caution should be exercised when giving corticosteroid therapy for women with systemic infections including tuberculosis or sepsis there are no absolute contraindications you must not delay the delivery for 48 hours just because you want to give corticosteroids in cases like severe preeclampsia or eclampsia etc who should receive antenatal corticosteroids antenatal corticosteroids should be given to all women at risk of iatrogenic or spontaneous preterm birth from 24 weeks up to 34.6 weeks of gestation they should also be given before planned cesarean section between 37 to 38.6 weeks in order to decrease admissions to nicu with respiratory morbidity the only risk of this recommendation is that it may reduce educational attainment at school age at what gestation should antenatal corticosteroids be discussed and offered clinicians should offer a single course of antenatal corticosteroids to women between 24 and 34.6 weeks of gestation who are at risk of preterm birth recent studies indicate that they are beneficial for late preterm delivery that is at 35 to 36 weeks of gestation as well they can be considered for women between 23 to 23.6 weeks of gestation who are at risk of preterm birth the decision to administer corticosteroids at gestations less than 24 weeks should be made at a senior level taking all clinical aspects into consideration obstetricians currently have the discretion to administer steroids before the 24th week of pregnancy but the whole clinical picture needs to be taken into account with respect to intact survival data as well as the chance of any survival based on antenatal assessment of viability in the next few slides i will discuss administration of corticosteroids in special circumstances First I will talk about multiple pregnancy at risk of preterm birth. Clinicians should continue to offer a single course of antenatal corticosteroid treatment to a woman with multiple pregnancy at risk of imminent iatrogenic or spontaneous preterm delivery between 24 to 34.6 weeks of gestation. The optimal dose and pharmacokinetics in multiple pregnancy is not clearly understood. Evidence suggests that multiple pregnancy attenuates the beneficial effect of antenatal steroids what about use of corticosteroids in pregnant women with pregestational diabetes mellitus first of all let us understand whether these patients require prenatal corticosteroids in the first place the answer is yes maternal hyperglycemia can adversely affect fetal lung maturity diabetes mellitus is not a contraindication to antenatal corticosteroid treatment for fetal lung maturation this is a nice recommendation women with impaired glucose tolerance or diabetes who are receiving prenatal steroids should have additional insulin according to an agreed protocol and be closely monitored as far as their glucose levels are concerned What about chorioamnionitis? Clinical chorioamnionitis is significantly associated with both cystic periventricular leukomalacia and cerebral palsy. This would suggest that for gravida with chorioamnionitis, a course of antenatal corticosteroids may be started, but this should not delay delivery if indicated by maternal or fetal condition. In patients with preterm premature rupture of membranes give steroids to those at increased risk of preterm labor pregnancies affected by fetal growth restriction between 24 to 35.6 weeks of gestation at risk of preterm delivery should receive a single course of antenatal corticosteroids there is evidence to suggest that antenatal corticosteroids 
have an effect on cerebral blood flow in growth restricted fetuses that is different from that in normally grown fetuses the benefits from antiretinal corticosteroids for early preterm growth restricted infants appear to outweigh the possible adverse effects Corticosteroids should be given to reduce the risk of respiratory morbidity in all babies delivered by elective cesarean section prior to 38.6 weeks of gestation. The reason for this recommendation is delivery by elective cesarean section at less than 39.0 weeks of gestation can lead to respiratory morbidity in neonates requiring admissions to the neonatal intensive care unit. This is a special RCOG recommendation. Should they be given prophylactically in pregnant women with history of previous preterm birth? The answer is negative. There is no evidence to support a practice of prophylactic steroids in women with a previous history of preterm delivery or multiple pregnancy who show no signs of being at risk of iatrogenic or spontaneous preterm birth. The most important thing to know is which corticosteroids are given and what is their optimum dose. One can either give injection betamethasone or injection dexamethasone. 24 mg of dexamethasone phosphate is given intramuscularly in two divided doses of 12 mg 24 hours apart or four divided doses of 6 mg 12 hours apart. An alternative is 24 mg of betamethasone sodium phosphate or acetate mixture given intramuscularly in two divided doses of 12 mg given 24 hours apart how long after administration is a course of antenatal corticosteroids most effective maximum benefit is seen after 48 hours of first dose or 24 hours of second dose Does it mean that if preterm birth is so advanced that women will deliver in much less than 24 hours there is no point in giving corticosteroids not so antiretinal corticosteroids single dose should still be administered if birth is expected in less than 24 hours some benefits are also seen when the first dose is given within 24 hours of birth It is important to know how long they are effective. They are most effective in reducing respiratory distress syndrome between 24 hours and 7 days of administration of the second dose of prenatal corticosteroids. Studies have shown that there is partial benefit when delivery happens before 24 hours or after 7 days of giving corticosteroids. I have mentioned two different corticosteroids which can be used. The question is which one is better? Well, it depends. Data is conflicting. A large randomized retrospective study has suggested that infants exposed to antenatal betamethasone have less neonatal cystic periventricular leukomyelitis than infants exposed to antenatal dexamethasone. The Cochrane review on antenatal corticosteroids for accelerating fetal lung maturation in women at risk of preterm birth suggests that betamethasone treatment causes a larger reduction in respiratory distress syndrome than dexamethasone. A Cochrane systematic review found that dexamethasone compared with betamethasone had following advantages: one, it reduced intraventricular hemorrhage; two, it is cheaper and 3 it does not require refrigeration all in all maybe dexamethasone might have more advantages than betamethasone but according to me if reducing respiratory distress syndrome is the main goal then betamethasone is better what about repeat weekly doses On one hand, weekly repeat courses of antenatal corticosteroids reduce the occurrence and severity of neonatal respiratory disease, but on the other hand, these short-term benefits are associated with a reduction in weight and head circumferences. There is limited evidence 
to recommend repeat courses of anti-ill corticosteroids if a woman remains at imminent risk of preterm birth seven days after administration of anti-ill corticosteroids. However, a further course may reduce the need for neonatal respiratory support. The maximum number of corticosteroid courses given in any one pregnancy should not exceed three. If more are given, baby is likely to be smaller. Here is a list of reasons why repeat weekly rescue courses are not recommended. Observational studies in humans have suggested that multiple courses of steroids may lead to possible harmful effects including growth delay, brain developmental delay, lung developmental problems, necrotizing enterocolitis, maternal and neonatal sepsis, adrenal gland insufficiency and placental infarction. However, there is one exception. A rescue course of 2 doses of 12 mg of beta metazone or 4 doses of 6 mg dexamethasone should only be considered with caution in those pregnancies where the first course was given at less than 26 weeks of gestation and another obstetric indication arises later in pregnancy, such as severe preeclampsia. Senior opinion should be sought if a rescue course is to be considered. And lastly, what about safety? Women may be advised that the use of a single course of antiviral corticosteroids does not appear to be associated with any significant short-term maternal or fetal adverse effects. There is still insufficient evidence on the long-term benefits and risks of multiple courses of antenatal corticosteroids. Evidence on the long-term benefits and risks of single course of antenatal corticosteroids shows no clear difference in adverse neurological or cognitive effects on the fetus. If you want to know more about this topic or any other topic in obstetrics and gynecology, please refer to my books Modern Gynecology, Modern Obstetrics and Practical Obstetrics and Gynecology and other books. The links are given below. They are available on Amazon.in. For purchase inquiries, contact me on this WhatsApp number. I have also published two question answer books which are particularly useful for exam going students. These are Clinical Cases in Obstetrics, 1000 plus questions and answers and Clinical Cases in Gynecology, 1000 plus questions and answers. These are also available on Amazon.in. You can also follow me on other social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram. The links are given here. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends and also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching.